Shalom, Shalom, Yasharala, Shalom. All right. A lot going on here. Hope, hope you akim and akwad and have a, a baraki wam, blessed day. So let's go ahead and let's get it started. <clears throat> First and foremost, as always, we start off with Kol Halal Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Bahashim Wahaba Kakwadash Kol Halal All Praises to Yahweh the Heavenly Father Bahashim in the name of Yahweh Shai who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ Bahashim in the name of Wahaba Kakwadash which is the Holy Spirit that gives us all knowledge wisdom truth and understanding double honors and salutations out to the elders and apostles of great millstone who've been teaching this truth and move well on to we say Shalom. Thwada, 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 through the spirit for giving us this truth in the latter end as scripture says we are entering into another man's labor so thank you thwada, for being so diligent all these years and also you want to give salutations out to the innumerable one third that are scattered among the four corners of the earth that are studying profusely that your house may be blessed through salvation we are almost out of here so let's keep pushing all right all right as we see just here real quick here there's a lot going on in here in the news all right there's a lot going on. These prophecies are speeding up, man. Okay, and as always, I always like to start off with 1 Thessalonians 5.21. Prove all things and hold fast to which is good. So if you have your swords, Babu Kusha, please shh, pull them out of their sheaves and follow along as that is the correct way to teach and to learn. Okay, so you know that these are not my vain words or opinion, but the actual oracles of the Heavenly Father. All right, so follow along if you will. All right, so the name of this lesson is called I Will Put the Hooks in thy jaws and turn thee back and that's what's happening right now okay we see the prophecies of wars and rumors of war are coming to pass all right for those that are not in the now russia is dropping bombs on ukraine okay putin originally stated all right that there would be no plans to attack ukraine but we know the lord puts it on the hearts of the men's or should i say the kings of the earth to do his will right and as we know his will will be done proverbs 21 and 1 it's the first precept the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. Again, so we always say that there's no free will, okay? This is the Lord's movie, okay? And he's moving all of the chess pieces into play as we speak to set up this third woe, okay? Pursuant to Revelations 11, meaning the third world war, okay? So there's an article here that I was coming across here when I'm doing our research as, as a seer and a prophet and man of the Lord. Our job is to, is to, is to go into the scriptures and foresee and then warn the sheep. Okay, so um, in the article here, um, and I will name off the, um, where are the resources. Um, the current confrontation between Russia and the West is fueled by many grievances, but the greatest is the belief in Moscow that the West tricked the former Soviet Union by breaking promises made at the end of the Cold War, right? And this was during 1989 to 1990, okay? Um, that NATO would not expand um, to the East, all right? So this is the current situation that goes all the way back to the Cold War of the 90s, okay? Where Clinton promised Gorbachev that there would be no eastward expansion or very, very little. All right, of NATO, though it was never documented on paper, um, it was a verbal agreement between the two powerhouses. All right, so it goes on to say the final agreement signed by Russia and the West in September 1990 applied only to Germany. It allowed foreign stationed NATO troops to cross the old Cold War line marked by East Germany at the discretion of the German government. The government was contained in a signed addendum, NATO's commitment to protect and ensure. Salakia and Article 5 have for the first time moved east into the former Russian held territory. Right, and that's what we see happening right now. Okay, Ukraine is a former Soviet Republic of Russia. Okay, USSR. And the agreement was that NATO would not expand into post Soviet states. Okay, but we see that America does what it does best goes back on agreements, lies, and just, you know, continues to be the wicked um, that it is. So the article goes on to say, Ukraine isn't joining NATO anytime soon. Yeah, we know that. And the President Joe Biden has said as much. Still, NATO's open door policy, the alliance's foundational principle that any qualified European country could join, cuts both ways. To the east, it's a statement of autonomy or self governing, right? Um, and to Russia, it's a threat. 
okay and putin's february 21st speech shows all right that he perceives if he perceives any security co cooperation between ukraine and nato monetization of the airports training exercises in any of any nature that's as he as we quote as the article quotes is equivalent to putting a knife to russia's throat end quote okay this is what putin had said all right so this attack <laughs> looks like they're basically rewriting the cold uh the post-cold war security order all over again all right and the article also uh putin, putin mentioned that um he has said that nato's decision to move eastward expansion was a serious provocation which seems uh to be one of the many causes for this attack all right in ukraine all right and there's an article also on Vox.com Vox talking about how um, America's NATO's expansion affected this Ukraine crisis. All right. And uh, the heading says, when 10,000s of Russian troops, Salakia, started moving towards the Ukraine border late last year, Russian's President Vladimir Putin effectively issued an ultimatum. They won't go home until he has concrete agree agreements prohibit prohibiting any farther eastward expansion of NATO. Right. So this all boils down to territorial disputes, y'all. All right. Putin's biggest fear is political competition. Okay. Article 5 states that an attack on any country is treated as an, an attack on the entire alliance. All right. So basically, if Russian military forces would engage with a uh, hypothetical NATO member, let's say Ukraine, all right, that would theoretically bring Moscow into conflict with the U.S., U.K., France, and 27 other NATO members, all right? But because you need a unanimous buy-in of all 30 member countries, Ukraine's membership was basically opposed due to it not meeting the joining conditions, all right? And so inevitably what that does is it puts Ukraine in an unattainable or defenseless position without NATO's protection, okay? Because Putin's larger objective is to reestablish the Russian political culture dominance over a nation that um, he seemed to he, he seen as theirs, and that's Ukraine. All right, formerly of the Soviet Union. All right, and for those you don't know, this is where Chernobyl was. All right, it's just north of Ukraine. Chernobyl was that big nuclear power plant that exploded. I remember very very well because I actually was in I was in school and I had to do a paper um, on that explosion in Russia, that power plant. Okay, so basically what we're seeing is Putin is reestablishing or rebuilding that old Soviet Union powerhouse. And Sleepy Joe knows this. Okay, as a matter of fact, let me just pull, pull an interview here with Sleepy Joe when he's actually, he knows what's going on. All right, let me just go ahead and bring this out here so we can get it. Putin is the aggressor. Putin chose this war. And now he and his country will bear the consequences. President Biden announcing additional sanctions on Russia, going after the country's elites, large banks and companies, and technology exports. Mm. And see, this is so funny because even Trump said, had mentioned that sanctions aren't going to work on Russia. Putin can give a damn about sanctions, man. Okay, <laughs> this is not about that. You know, there's a, there's a bigger picture to this. Okay, but this is once again Sleepy Joe at his antics, man. <laughs> Let's continue. Russia unleashing an assault on Ukraine from multiple directions. And after a fierce battle, Ukraine lost control of Chernobyl, mm. the site of the world's worst nuclear disaster. Mm. But Biden says the Russian president's ambitions are much bigger than e Ukraine. Exactly. To, in fact, reestablish the former Soviet Union. That's what this is about. And there it is. You see that? You see that? This is what this is all about. All right. When you get past all the sensationalism of the media, all the theatrics, it all boils down to the Lord setting the stage for the grand finale. OK, he's putting the hooks in the mind of Putin to do his will, putting the hooks in the jaws, turning Russia back to that old Soviet Union powerhouse. OK, this is what this thing is all about, y'all. OK, the stage is being set. All right. Goes another. Um. Um news um um interview on uh bbc news um let's go let's go ahead and, as a matter of fact let's pull that the view from here in ukraine well what about russia in an address on state television vladimir putin claimed his country had been left no choice but to defend itself against what he suggested were threats from modern ukraine and that moscow would try to what he called denazify this country from Moscow, Steve Rosenberg. From the President of Russia, 
a fateful decision. Vladimir Putin said military operation, but really the Kremlin was launching a full-scale invasion. Of right now, for those you don't know, Kremlin is the heart of Moscow, all right, and it's basically a symbol of both Russia and the Soviet power and authority. Okay, this is all spiritual. What's happening? All right, let's get it. Ukraine. Russian stocks plunged. The ruble hit an all-time low. Right. Fears of conflict superseded by the shock of a war and what may come next. I think that if Putin is not stopped now in Ukraine, this war uh, would be the beginning of the Third World War. And there you go. And this is exactly what's happening. This is the beginning of the third woe. Okay? Plain and simple. All right? As scripture says, as his ways are holy unto the plain, so are they stumbling blocks unto the wicked. If you can't see what's happening, you can't look around you and see through the prophecies that this place is done, man. Then you're done with it. Vladimir Putin comes across now as a leader with an almost messianic idea to force Ukraine back into Moscow's orbit. It you see that? What did he say? To force Ukraine back into Mo Moscow's orbit or rule. All right. You see that? So what we're doing is we're looking at the beginnings of World War Three. OK. All right. And we're going to go into the book of Ezekiel. All right. Thirty eight. Putting the hooks in thy jaws, which is the feature scripture. Okay, Ezekiel 38, 1 and 4. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog and the land of Magog, which is Russia and Turkey. All right, the chief, of, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, and chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back, and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth, and all thine army, horse, Horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all, with all sorts of armor, even great company with bucklers, shields, and all of them handling swords. You see that? So the Lord is turning Russia back into that old Soviet powerhouse with all of its allies, okay? This prophecy is happening right now, Jake. You see? Russia is gathering together all of the nations for that great and dreadful day of the Lord, man. Scripture says, method of time diligently within itself, right? And how do we do that? By using the Bible. We link up the prophecies therein. So when finally we see them passing by in real time, we know what timeline that we are in. All right. So we see the Lord of hosts is mustering the battle. OK, so it's, let's just, let's continue here. Let's go on and look at some of the nations here that it's talking about. Ezekiel 38, 5 and 6, Persia, Ethiopia and Lydia with them, all of them with shields and helmets, Gomer and all of its bands in the house of Tugrama, and all of the north quarter, and all of his bands and many people with thee. So let's just pull a map up here really quick if I we can. I grab this map so we can see what that's talking about exactly. Let's move that into play here. Let me go ahead and bring that up so we see what this is talking about. All right. So it said Persia, Ethiopia, and Lydia. Okay, so Persia is uh, India, Iranians, Ethiopia, and Lydia, North Africa, Goma and Tugama, Turkey. As you see that right here, Goma, Tugama, Turkey, Tubal, Meshach. See, this is all Turkey, okay? All going to join Russia, okay? So his Lord is setting up and assembling the nations, all right? So what we're looking at is the beginning or the initial conflict. Okay, that is going to kick off that World War III, and all that's going to take place right here in Saudi Arabia, in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, at Yahweh Shabbat, his decision. Okay? This is what we have to understand. All right? It goes on to say, Ezekiel 30 and 7, Be thou prepared, and prepared for thyself thou, and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, be thou a guard unto them. Right. A guard on to who? Iran. All right. Because what people don't know is Iran and Russia have what's called a Gulistan Treaty. All right. Which is a result of the Russo-Persian War of 1813. OK. And that treaty still stands today. OK. Russia will guard them. All right. Even as we see Israel right now in conflicts going back and forth with Iran. OK. Um, all this is, is going to be a result 
of Israel doing something that is going to bring America into this war. Okay, so this is the time lag that we're in right now. This is the setup. Okay, so this is the next prophecy, you will, concerning the war that is to take place. Jeremiah 15, 45. Therefore hear ye the counsel of the Lord that he hath taken against Babylon and his purpose that he has proposed against the land of the Chaldeans. The land of the Chaldeans is, is America today, okay? The Chaldeans was, 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 was liking to um, America today, all right? Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their desolation, their habitation desolate with them, right? So Israel being the least of the flock will eventually bring U.S. into a nuclear destruction along with it. Now, though the land of Israel won't be utterly destroyed, all right, it will be rebuilt and re-inhabited. Babylon will not be, okay? And that's what we have to understand. So all these things are taking play in the proper order in its perfection, all right, written perfectly within these scriptures, man. All right, and this is beautiful, all right, when you have this understanding, all right? Now, just on the side note, interestingly, now, when you do some research in the meaning of Putin's name, ironically, it means someone in Russia, someone who goes along the path or way, right? Okay, so now, when you go into that word, in Ezekiel 38, 8, when it says, be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, right? Prepared is a Hebrew word, 3559, meaning kun, to direct toward, aim as a weapon, to be restored. Whoa, you see that? So we see Putin is being directed towards that path or way, right? To restore what? The former Soviet Union powerhouse, all right? as in the days of old, before the Cold War. This is what's happening. And also in the spirit to restore the kingdom of, of heaven, all right? To restore the house of David as well, all right? He's playing a major role into that, all right? This is what we have to understand, all right? This is, this is very beautiful when you have this, 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 this understanding, Ezekiel 38 and 8. And after many days thou shalt be visited, in the latter years thou shalt come into the land that was brought back of the sword. So what land was brought back of the sword? Let's talk about America, all right? Remember the beast with the deadly wound that healed pursuant to Revelations 13, all right? This takes place in the latter years, letting you know this is a future prophecy, all right? This is, this is why Japheth isn't mentioned here, all right? Because there's going to be another people within these lands in the latter end times, all right? So basically, Egyptian will fight against Egyptian or Satan against Satan, okay? This is the Edomites war, <laughs> all right? Esau against Esau, okay? So this is what's happening. It goes on to say, and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, meaning the governments, all right, which have been always waste. But it is brought forth out of out of the nations and they shall dwell safely in them. Right. So we've been utterly destroyed here in Babylon. Hence the reason why we need our big brother, Yahweh Shah, to come redeem us as promised. All right. And it is brought forth out of the nations. What is the elect, the house of David that's being rebuilt or restored right now? All right, Ezekiel 38, 9. Though thou shalt ascend and come like a storm, thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land. Thou and all thy bands and many people with thee, thus saith the Lord God. It shall come to pass that in that same time shall thou shall come into mind and thou shalt think an evil thought. What's that evil thought? An invasion, all right? To finally penetrate the virgin daughter of Babylon that she may be a virgin no more. All right, after Russia initiates this work. Okay, you see that? Ezekiel 38 and 11. And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages, and I will go to them that are at rest. That's America. And dwelling safely. America, balling. We got cares, no cares in the world. We're just driving Bentleys, Lamborghinis, Gucci purses. Everyone's just balling here, man. All right, just dwelling safely at rest. Right? And all of them without walls and having neither bars nor gates to take a spoil and to take a prey and to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited. Right. America's inhabited right now. All right. We're balling. We're living deliciously. But this place will soon be turned desolate. And upon the people that are gathered out of many nations. Right. Because America is a melting pot of nations, just like the first beast, ancient Rome, was a melting pot. All right. America, the revival of the ancient Roman Empire is back again, that same melting pot of nations, 
All right, goes on to says, would have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land. Right, and how have we gotten cattle and goods? Through our traffic here. And that's recorded in the book of Revelations. All right, the high traffic, the commerce, the trade, you know, on the seas, on the waters. Okay, this is what this is talking about. All right, an American an invasion. An American invasion, I should say, Salakia. And I precepted as Jeremiah 51 and 14, the Lord of hosts, meaning the Lord of armies, has sworn himself saying, surely I will fill thee with men as with caterpillars and they shall lift up and shout against thee. You see that? So America will be penetrated with men. And interestingly enough, as always, men of the Lord, we go into the etymology of words, right? So when you go into the etymology of a shout here, it's a Hebrew word, H 1959. Hadad, meaning vintage gatherers and wine press treaders. <laughs> Soldiers going to battle. You see that? Now, what should come to your mind, Joel 3 and 12? Let the heathen be awakened and come up to the valley of, of Jehoshaphat. Where's the valley of Jehoshaphat? Right here. See that? Saudi Arabia, where we just, where we just named. For I will sit and judge all the heathen round about put ye in the sickle for the harvest is ripe come get down come get you down for the press is full what the wine press the vats overflow for their wickedness is great you see that so the lord is getting ready all right this is all spiritual and it's beautiful man ezekiel 38 13 the rest of the nations, Sheba and Dedan, and the merchants of Tarshish, with all the young lions thereof, so say unto thee, to say unto Russia, Are thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered all thy company to take a prey, to carry away the silver and gold, to take away cattle and goods, to take a spoil? Right, so we know, uh, 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 um, Salakia, that uh, Sheba and Dedan is Saudi Arabia, okay? World War, War, War III will take place, Tarshish being Spain. All right. And so basically they will be looking to Russia, who is heading this charge against America. All right. Which is basically which is basically one big city. OK, this is all America is. OK, the word citizen goes into word city because without inhabitants in a city, it's not a city. It's a ghost town. OK, so citizens and city. OK, so America is basically one big city. OK, the states are really just providences. OK, that you can go back and forth in between like L.A. and New York. You don't need any passport, any legal papers to travel over state lines. None of that. OK, there are no walls, no gates, no borders around America. This land sits wide open in waters, man. All right. And with our military sent overseas to Saudi Arabia, she will be fully exposed. Joel. 2 and 20, but I will remove far from you the northern army. You see that? America's military. Okay, and I will drive them into a land barren and desolate, Saudi Arabia. Right here. Okay, with his face towards the East Sea, which is River Euphrates, and the hinder and his hinder part towards the utmost sea, which is the Red Sea. And his stink shall come up and ill and his ill savor shall come up because he has done great things right that's that little horn who's speaking great things in daniel 7 all right america the proud you see that so this north country is america all right what we just read okay and ezekiel 38 coming with all of the nations all right that we just named including china uh north korea you know japan iran uh, um nato and eu which is eventually going to turn on america as scripture says, the beast will hate the whore. All right. It goes on to say, and they shall set themselves in array against her. From thence sh she shall be taken. Their arrows shall be as a mighty expert man. None shall return in vain. You see that? So those arrows are ICBM nuclear missiles destined for America here real soon, man. Okay, this is what this whole setup, okay, in Ukraine is all about. This is what this all is going to boil down to or leading into. Okay, Jeremiah 15, 14, put yourselves in array against Babylon round about. All ye that bend the bow, shoot at her, spare no arrows, for she has sinned against the Lord. Shout against her round about. She has given her hand. Her foundations are fallen. Her walls are thrown down. Right. Remember that? The land of unwalled villages. Okay, sitting carelessly. You see? For it is the vengeance of the Lord to take vengeance upon her as she has done do unto her. So what has America done? It's touched 
the apple of the Lord's eye, man, by taking and perpetually murdering the children of Israel in cold blood, man. You see? This is what this thing is all about, okay? This is why all of this is, there's no more mirth here. Matter of fact, Baruch 4 and 32, miserable are the cities which the children serve. Miserable is she that received thy sons. You see that? You see that? This is why this place is going down in misery, man. All the mirth and joy is gone here. It's all about the children of Israel. The Lord is coming to pick up his children, man. Period. That's it. All right? So we see how all this is connected. The Lord is mustering the battle. He's setting the stage. And yet we see sleepy Joe Biden still pushing the same old threats of antiquity, talking about sanctions, man. Russia doesn't give a damn about U.S. sanctions. He tore that shit up, okay? Reve Revelation 17 says the tin horns, meaning NATO, is going to hate the whore. All these nations mentioned are going to shoot missiles on every side of America, okay? Why is this happening? Because this is biblical prophecy. That's why. All right. And why aren't these Christian pastors and these so-called Bible believers breaking this down to you in these whorehouses? OK. So my advice to y'all that are listening. OK. Ask your pastors to explain what's happening in the world using the book because it explains it. OK. And then and only then may you be may you realize that you've been lied to this whole time. OK. The Lord has got the men of the Lord out here. The word is out here freely given right now. The seals have been broken and they're open. All right? Repent, return, so we can get up out of here. All right, so I just wanted to just, you know, do that quick lesson real quick. Um, I pray that this is edifying. I don't want to say, call, hello, Yahweh, Baha, Shimmy, Yahweh, Shai, Baha, Shimmy, Rakakudash, Rakata, the Baba Ball. Shalom.